Hello, my name is Michael, I'm running the Board Games Chronicle blog and today I would like to share with you some information uh, regarding the Gloomhaven most often and common error. As with every complex multi-level game in Gloomhaven there are rules you tend to omit, forget or simply misinterpret. Recently our company was enlarged by the fourth member and even though he thoroughly read the rulebook he approached us with the questions like, you know, guys, what was the most common mistake you committed during the initial scenarios of the Gloomhaven? I want to avoid them in our play. Well, we prepared spontaneously the list. To be quite honest, we had some laugh seeing what funny mistakes we did in the past. Still, I think it is worth sharing with other players as it might help you to avoid those pitfalls. The list is more or less chronological, although with some issues we dealt pretty quickly and some were with us for a long time. I hope you will enjoy this. So, let's move on. Ok, so let us start. First of all, rulebook. Read with understanding. It is a very simple suggestion, but so necessary. Really, read carefully with understanding not only rules, but also cards, frequently ask questions and other stuff, especially if English is not your native language. Read it before your first play, then, I don't know, go through one, two, three scenarios. Read it again, because you will discover a lot of stuff which was so obvious, but actually you might it misinterpret. Example, attack is different thing than attacks and completely separate from attack action. Look it up in the rulebook and you will understand me what's the difference there. We misinterpreted some of the items and action card also initially, so you know, be careful with this. Just, just RTFM, that's all what I say. Okay, so now the traps. Only damage traps actually inflict a direct hit to health. Uh, as per the table at the end of the rulebook, you can check where that the higher the scenario level, the more severe the effect is. Still, there are tons of scenarios where additional effects like stun, wound, poison are also applicable. Uh, what is more, there are also such cases when trap has only negative effect, no damage at all. We sometimes forgot to check and miss that, so please, as mentioned in my first paragraph, pay attention when reading. It's really important. Ok, point number 3. Scenario level calculation. Such an easy thing to miss, really. It occurred that some of our scenarios we played on hard, not normal level, as we made a mistake in formula. We simply did not divide by 2 of the average level before rounding it up. So simply, uh, we played on much harder uh, a challenge than, than we initially thought. We managed to pass those adventures sex successfully and then consciously switch it to these higher difficulty levels because it was giving us a lot of fun and it actually yields much more gold, experience and other stuff. But initially it really puzzled us. Why is, was it so hard to win those scenarios? So really, check the formula and make sure you calculate scenario level properly. Ok, point number 4. Negating the damage of cards. There's a clear passage in the rulebook. The player can choose one card to lose from his or her hand, or two cards to lose from his or her discard pile to negate any damage. Any damage, simply. We forgot about that crucial rule once or twice, I think at least twice, especially easily done in the heat of a battle. And that actually costed us one scenario and a very difficult ending of another one. Be aware of this rule. This is really your last chance sometimes to survive. Remember, you can do it. So, again, read the manual. Ok, point number 5. Healing action versus poison and wound. As per rules, if you are poisoned and the heal ability is used on you, the poison token is removed and the heal has no other effect. 
On the other hand, when a heal ability is used on a wounded figure, the wound token is removed and the heal continues normally. Third possible occurrence is when character is wounded, wounded and poisoned. Uh, healing then removes both poison and wound tokens, but the heal still does not heal the damage. Of course, in our initial games we messed with those three things. Nowadays there are no errors during our gameplay regarding the heal ability, but a home rule was created. We thought it a little unfair that it is so easy to get rid of wound, <coughs> so in our place, when you are wounded, you spend one heal point on removing the wound token and the rest on regular heal, so you cannot use the whole heal on healing yourself when wounded. Again, pretty confusing uh, set of rules, be aware of them. Ok, point number 6. Advantage and disadvantage with rolling modifiers. This is one of the most troublesome things for us to grasp and it was really hard to correctly ap apply this in our games. The rulebook seems pretty straightforward. An attacker with advantage will draw two modifier cards from their deck, of course, and will use whichever one is better. And now, the important thing, if one rolling modifier card was drawn, its effect is added to the other card played. If two rolling modifiers were drawn, you continue to draw cards until a rolling modifier is not drawn and then add together all drawn effects. So, how does it look like in reality? When you draw a rolling poison and uh, double damage, wow! You not only inflicted double losses on the enemy, but also poisoned it, because you have advantage. But when you get rolling poison and a null, so zero, no, no, no attack, uh, although it is advantage, you score zero damage, because you add a rolling card to the other card. Of course, poison effect works. That seems counterintuitive, but as designer explained, playing with thin attack deck and making it, uh, it uh, more powerful by rolling modifiers brings possibility of failure. I felt it very painfully with my small scoundrel deck, 14 cards, uh, when I added rolling poisons there. Well, null was not a rare occurrence there, unfortunately. On the other hand, having a disadvantage and drawing a, roll, a rolling modifier results in cancelling the la latter. Yeah? So we cancel the rolling modifier. So what happens if you got double damage and a rolling poison? Well, despite this being a, dis a disadvantage, you do not have a poison effect, but you get the double damage. Wow, really? This is one of the more uh, confusing rules we, we encountered, so familiarize yourself with it, definitely. Ok, point number 7, again, advantage, disadvantage and unused blesses, curses. A small thing which we recently learned, but it seems we played it incorrectly previously. Again, touching the advantage, disadvantage situations. Remember, you should always remove any blessings curses once you have drawn them. So unlike the regular null or uh, double damage cards, the blessings curses do not get reshuffled back into the deck after you have drawn them once. They get uh, taken out of a, they got taken out of the scenario entirely after they have been drawn the first time. But remember, when you have advantage and get curse and plus one, so one card is curse, the other is plus one. You of course use positive modifier, but this curse, which was added to your deck, is removed from the game. Uh, actually, not from the game, but to the common area. Remember about it. Point number eight. We'll talk now about differences between summons and spawns. Yeah, that was somehow tricky f uh, from the start for us and even today we scratch our heads sometimes to make sure we played the summons and spawns correctly. I would like to provide some brief differentiation for the fellow readers and uh, whoever is watching this, as it also happened to us. Key difference 1. 
Summoned monsters never act in the turn that they are summoned. Monsters that are spawned in the middle of the turn act just like monsters who are revealed when a door is open in the middle of a turn. Summons do not act in the turn they are summoned. Spawned monsters act in the turn they appeared. Key difference too, when a monster uh, summon, uh, uh, s sorry, when a monster summons another monster, it must be brought in an adjacent empty hex, as close as possible to the character. If there are no adjacent empty hexes, of course there will be no summon. On the other hand, when monsters spawn another monsters, they must also spawn in an empty hex. But if their spawn hex is not empty, they will spawn in a the nearest empty hex to it, regardless of whether it's adjacent or not. So summons have to be uh, adjacent to the monster summons them, and if there are no free hexes, uh, the action is cancelled. The spawns does not need this free hex adjacent to the monster who spawns them, and can be spawned even farther from, from these monsters. Still, we need to remember about one similarity of those two types. When a monster dies, a money token is only placed on the hex where it died if a monster was not summoned nor spawned. Only the regular monsters who did not appear during the scenario during, due to the summoning or spawning provides you with money. Okay, point number nine. So how long the effects last? The conditions, both positive like strengthen as well as negative, muddle, stun, immobilize, were sources of confusion for us for some time. Especially the question, how long do they last? The rulebook says, conditions last until the end of your or monster next turn. The frequently asked questions clarifies that next turn means your next full turn. So if you start a turn with a condition in effect, then at the end of a turn it is removed. Clear. If a monster stuns you on its turn, then you, your next turn, whether that happens in the current round or the following round, you would be under the effect of stun, and then it would go away at the end of that turn. If you manage to get stunned on your own turn, you would immediately suffer the effects, then you would also suffer from the effects on the following turn in the following round before the effect wore off at the end of the turn. This also applies to conditions on monsters. Another tricky thing was with the question, when my positive effects, which I put on myself, start to be active? The answer is very simple, immediately. Look at the picture uh, which I'm presenting uh, with this video. If in my turn I first play top of smoke bomb, the strengthen from this will immediately work on the bottom of crippling poison played on the same turn. Maybe not the most powerful combination in this case, but I hope uh, you know what I mean. So again, read the rule book about uh, uh, the uh, effect effects and how long they last, it's, it can really confuse uh, and, and uh, I suggest getting, getting some more materials regarding this aspect. Ok, point 10, loot. In many scenarios we played the loot incorrectly. Uh, in most of them it really did not matter, but in some it can have impact on your uh, when you perform end of turn loot or a loot action on a treasure, there are a lot of treasures in the uh, scenarios, you open the treasure immediately. You do not wait to the, till the end of the scenario. This is important as you might encounter a crippling trap uh, in, when in the last play, like two days ago, uh, we had one treasure with uh, minus five damage yeah, for one of our uh, characters. Uh, if you get an item, it goes immediately to your backpack, but you cannot use it in this scenario. So, remember how the loot works on the treasures. Ok, point number 11, elements. Sometimes we forgot that if you create the element, you cannot use it yourself that turn. 
uh, they become strong only at the end of a turn of, uh, of a character monster which created it. So you cannot use it because they, they will appear at the end of your turn. Of course, then if there are monsters consuming particular elements, all monsters of the type use it. Not only one of them. This is important. For example, I don't know, Night Demon and, and Dark. It is just enough, it is available to them at their beginning of turn or initiative. Um, just to be clear, you can create element and in the same turn consume the one produced by the monster or your buddies from the group. You simply cannot do it for yourself, so you cannot create it for yourself, but the buddies or monsters can create it for you. Remember about it, please. Ok, point number 12, Prosperity Ticks which can be really tricky. The Gloomhaven Prosperity is one of the key elements in the game, so while in the end we did not make any mistakes in that aspect, uh, we couple of times had a real issue to understand how it works. In essence, you can get the Prosperity ticks, but something you will discover after uh, opening the envelope B. Yeah, you will see. You are getting a minor ticks, those small steps. Not a full prosperity increase, but one of the minor ticks leading to it. We had also missions which said, at the conclusion, plus one prosperity. Again, it was only that small mini tick, not the full level of town prosperity. You can get used to it with experience and what uh, each, um, let's say, uh, word and sentence means, uh, but pay attention to this, yeah, it's really important. And the last point, 13, when scenario ends. Uh, the scenario ends at the end of the round that the objective is achieved. Pretty straightforward, but it was not always for us. If you, ha if you have accomplished your mission and you fulfilled the goal of the mission, you still have until the end of the round to loot coins and open treasure, treasure chests. And the run does not end immediately when the last enemy dies, if that was your objective. And of course, you can still uh, can have some character exhausted. But if all of them dies, the scenario is failure. Even if you fulfill the scenario conditions, you need to survive till the end of the round. Uh, we missed that a couple of times, of course, and usually to our detriment. Uh, a lot of loot was wasted. That, uh, that way. Fortunately, we have not lost any scenario because of this. Ok guys, time for a short summary. What I presented above was a, a list of difficulties, errors our group uh, was facing. Familiarizing our new player with them really helped to bring him up to speed. Uh, should you be interested in more rules explanation, uh, uh, explanations, I really strongly recommend reading the official Gloomhaven FAQ. On a side note, if you played Gloomhaven, uh, what were your most common and notorious errors? Uh, could you post them in the comments? I'm really interested in them. Uh, by the way, I consciously omitted one section completely, monster movement. This is so vast and large topic that this requires a separate article. But that is for another time, of course. Thank you very much once again for watching this video. If you like it, please uh, like it, subscribe, comment below. And uh, I'm really grateful for you being here with me. Thank you very much and bye for today.